<laughs> Jeremy Spencer, a.k.a. Devil Daddy, formerly a Five Finger Death Punch, uh, moving away from the skins to the front of the stage as the front man and founder of Psychosexual. Congrats on the uh, new release, Devil from Hell, man. Thank you. It's good to get it out finally. I was going to say, you look much uh, much different than the video uh, from, from, what I, from what I can tell. Have you been avoiding the sun a little bit lately? Yeah, uh, you know, it's bad for you. So I've just been staying indoors as much as possible. <laughs> hey, so so Jeremy, I got to ask you with the uh, pandemic, the new president, BLM, Iran, Iraq, the tensions in China. Um, do you think uh, the casual listener might hear the song Devil from Hell as hitting a little bit too close to home with all the evil that just seems to be like this weight on our shoulders right now? I don't think so. I think it's the other way. I think it's to pump people up and to make them release and feel good. You know, I, I look at it the other way. It's yeah. to me. It's it's the song that you need in the gym to to get all that stuff out. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And and I, I heard a uh, I I, you, I wouldn't really consider it an, an acoustic rendition, but a um, it almost has a more brood, brooding darkness to it. Uh, a new version that uh, that you just released today that is really really cool. I gotta say, uh, thank so you. Um, congratulations on all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. That started um, another radio station. Was they were wanting to maybe do some acoustic, like a three song acoustic specialty kind of set, and so mm -hmm. I went and recorded a version and sent it to my radio guy Kurt, and he started brainstorming. He's like, "Dude, this is cool, but you you've already added some." heavier elements to it why don't you even split the difference and then that way it doesn't have to be so campfire yeah. but it's not heavy enough to where stations won't freak out and not play it during the day because of the heavy vocal you know so we try to just uh balance it out that's why we call it the purgatory mix yeah very cool how did you uh, tell me a little bit about the production techniques on that because your voice is very ominous I don't know what kind of effect you're using on that. I don't know if you're pitching down your voice or if there's something else going on there, but it's really, really cool. Thanks. No, I just have a really low baritone baritone voice, but I always sing it through distortion, a little bit of distortion. Okay. Um, I, lo I love vocal effects. I mean, all my favorite artists have used them, you know, it's so you just have to do it right. But um, no, that's me singing. It's just low and it's hard to sing. That's really low. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to project because it's so low. You like you you know, like to get some real power behind it is tough. You know, I always loved your stage costumes and your makeup uh, in Five Finger Death Punch. Um, and you've really upped the game as Devil Daddy. Tell me about the process of getting into that character. How long does that take? It was pretty brutal at first when we didn't know what we were doing at all. Um, the person that co-designed it with me, um, we were messing around trying to figure out how it was going to work and it took about six hours the first time and i'm like this will never work yeah. i can't do this that's like jim carrey and the grinch mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. we figured out how to cut some corners and we have it down now to like a little over an hour which is doable oh. it's still inconvenient a little bit but uh that's way more doable than six for sure hey as as long as you can keep it under the time that it takes maria brink to get all dolled up i think you're doing well yeah, she, she can definitely relate to the pain part of this for sure. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, like you said, I was painting myself up in Death Punch and wearing skeleton costumes. And yeah, that took a little bit of time. I, I got that down pretty quick. But this is um, a lot more elaborate. <laughs> yeah. You know what? When, when I tried playing uh, some Kiss songs as a Kiss cover band, I found that as soon as you start sweating underneath the, uh, you know, the clown paint, it gets really itchy. <laughs> you want to do this uh, yeah. It, Dude, um, even in Death Punch, like I would be up there dripping and you can't wipe it with a towel because it's going to just get, so you have to like take one finger and poke the part that's itching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so even though there aren't a lot of live concerts right now, what's your vision for the live stage presentation uh, when you're ready to, uh, to take Psychosexual out on the road and, and, and have a show? We've done a live stream show um, and we had some crazy fire and blood and some cool stuff you know we're going to try to make it as visually exciting as we can just depending on what venue we're playing what slot you know how much stage space we have what the permits allow we can tailor it to pretty much any situation mm -hmm. but we're definitely whipping something together that will make it worth you know going to see and then hopefully people will be leaving there going dude you got to go check it out it was crazy yeah um looking this as uh, as kind of your new business how much do you have to 
um, kind of lean on uh, the individual that you were and the as big of a brand as five finger death punch became to, uh, to, to give you, I guess, a bit of a boost out of the gate with psychosexual. I mean, are, are and, and again, you know, I, I, I hate to talk about five finger death punch too much because this is where you are now. And I, and I'd rather consider this, you know, looking into the future as your new brand and, uh, and, and what you've got going on, but are you going to lean into some of the five finger death punch and try and pull some of that fan base over so that you've got some instant recognition? Recognizability. Well, I mean, I present it to everyone, and the, there are a lot of Five Finger fans that still follow what I do, so they're they're checking it out. Some like it, some don't. Um, mm -hmm. That's just how it's going to be. It's not Five Finger. There's elements of heaviness like Five Finger. There's some gothier elements, poppier elements, even maybe even some heavier elements. Um, it's kind of all over the map. But you know, I learned a lot in, in Death Punch and. I'm really grateful for that experience because it all kind of led me to where I am now. And I, I don't know that I could have been able to do my own band had I not gone through that experience. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm grateful for it. Um, so let me ask you this, who freaked you out most as a, as a kid, Gene Simmons is the demon, Alice Cooper, or I don't know, the madman himself, Ozzy Osbourne. And were you young enough to, to be there during the first, uh, incarnation of Marilyn Manson? Oh yeah. Um, Probably Gene freaked me out. I had a solo record and I remember listening to it with the lights off and it starts off with a, him laughing, ha, 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 all evil. And I was like, what is this? It freaked me out, but I loved it. Yeah. So then, I, you know, I've always been into horror stuff and stuff that uh, freaks me out. So I guess I, it's just always been there. Okay. Switching gears quite a bit. You've been sworn in as a reserve police officer in Indiana. What do you think about the uh, Derek Chauvin guilty verdict and the amount of pressure on the what I consider the wonderful men and women of our police force nationally. Um, and, and, and I know this can be a little bit of a tricky landmine situation. So uh, answer as much or as little as you want, but you've got some unique uh, perspective on this. And I, I have a lot of police officers that are friends of mine. It's heartbreaking for me to see. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, that's an ugly situation. That's um, that stuff happens far too often. And uh, I hope that it's, starts to not happen as much obviously like everyone else i don't know what kind of sentence he's going to get and if people will be happy with that um you can't really control it at this point at least he was guilty on all charges mm -hmm. so that's a start um but we'll see i mean he he could end up with like 12 years and then be but out you know and yeah. then that's not going to work for people so um it's a tough it's tough it's ugly it's gross um but there's a lot of great police officers too so it's yeah. not it's not fair to just assume that all policemen are, are the evil ones, you know, I mean, it's so, not true. So let me ask you with the, uh, you know, with the debate out there about police reform and, and, uh, and, and defunding, which I, I think maybe refunding would be a better word. I don't know how the whole defunding thing started, but uh, would you have any suggestions uh, on what kind of police reform could really make a difference? It's tough because you can't really predict the personality. I mean, somebody could come in for an interview and be totally different two weeks later after you hire them, you know? So I don't know. I don't know what to suggest. Yeah. The people that are bad seeds are bad seeds. So how do you, how do you catch that before it's too late? Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. It's, it's a tricky situation. All right. So back to the music um, because of your back issues, could there ever be a future with you back on drums in a band ever uh, in the, in the future from now? Yeah, you never know. Um, that certainly doesn't sound that appealing right now. I did a lot of drumming over the years and did it at the highest level. And then it started to become not at the highest level <laughs> because of my back. And um, But my back's really good now. I can drum. I just don't know if, if I want to return to that. Um, yeah. We'll see. You, you never really know. But right now, my focus is psychosexual and being the front man and trying something new that's stimulating and exciting, you know? Okay, so let's let's talk a hypothetical here with you as the front man. If you uh, could pick one drummer to be in a band with, and, and again, we're talking hypothetically here, who would you choose? And I'm going to give you a few choices to be able to pull from Neil Peart, Phil Collins, Mike Portnoy, or uh, Stuart Copeland. Um, well, I mean, Neil's the shredder, but I would probably go with Phil Collins because of his song ability, you yeah. know, he, his songwriting ability. I mean, they're all great songwriters, though. I mean, Stuart Copeland scores stuff. He writes. Mm -hmm. Neil Peart wrote all those great lyrics. He, he, they're all exceptional, but probably Phil Collins. Okay. Who do you think plays the hardest amongst those players? Stuart. <laughs> I would totally agree. <laughs> I have never seen somebody pound the crap out of a snare drum as hard as Stuart Copeland. 
That's funny. Um, okay, so one final question for you. And again, Jeremy, I really appreciate you taking the time. We're, uh, we're both uh, uh, fellow Nevadans and, uh, you know, battle-born, true and true. Um, yeah. What's the favorite spirit and dinner entree of a devil daddy? Probably um, rare steak. <laughs> and and a, and a spirit does a devil daddy lean toward uh, tequila or something maybe kentucky devil daddy would do tequila if he still drank but had to stop because it wasn't a good idea anymore but probably tequila would be the, the beverage of choice the, the character would be swigging the old jose cuervo gold straight from the bottle Probably anything. It doesn't matter. Anything you can spit fire with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy Spencer, congratulations on everything. Again, uh, the band, for those of you who don't know, uh, Wake Up, Get Out From Underneath the Rock, Psychosexual. Go check out the song uh, Devil From Hell. We'll put the link here in the video. Thanks again for your time, man. I hope to see you out on the road very, very soon once uh, the world finally opens back up. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks a lot for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, man. Right. You too.